My violet is named after a friend of mine's wife who first baptized this pattern during one of my annual hosted Manitoba trips. The color combination of the violet makes it an excellent choice when trout are focused on dark colored coronamid pupa and pupa that have just transitioned from the larval stage. Trout find the translucent look of the buzzer wrap body hard to resist. Here is the simple list of materials you will need to tie your own collection of violets. All right, so let's tie the violet. Into the jaws of my regal, I've placed a Daiichi 1120 number 12. Uh, you can tie these in 10s, 12s, 14s. You can also tie them on longer shanked hooks, um, such as a Daiichi 1760 or the Alec Jackson silver covered covert hooks. Um, they work very well for this as well. So um, got this in, I placed a 332nd, in this case, because um, it's a number 12, copper bead onto the shank. We're going to attach our tying thread, which is a rusty brown, either the MFC 80 or uh, UTC 70. Just get that started. Back up to the front. For the gills, we're going to use some of the UV2 sparkle yarn in white and I'm just going to attach this right on top of the hook a couple of wraps over top I like a couple underneath just to cock it up so uh, the gills don't get in the way of tying the fly on and then I'm pulling on this and using thread pressure and I'm going to take it to about the halfway point because I also use the gills to help build up sorry help build up that distinct front uh, taper that's common to the coronamids. You want a subtle taper. It's distinct but subtle if that makes sense. And then we have that complete and now we just come in with our whip finisher. Careful not to build up too much bulk back here. We don't want to uh, we want to build a little ramp to help push the bead forward but we don't want to have too much thread up there that obviously you can't slide your bead forward. So we've got that in place and we're just going to moisten our fingers to keep that. We'll trim that a little bit later. Now we're just going to reattach our tying thread and I'm just going to move the thread backwards and if you notice if I lift up on my tying thread here it's going to keep my thread wraps all adjacent to each other because they hit the thread right here slide down immediately um, in front of the previous wrap so you get a nice uh, no gaps nice smooth build up trim off the excess just carry that down into the bend on these curved scud hooks on my coronamids. I like to go so the thread's about a 45 degree angle when I pull it off the shank to the hook tip, sorry, the hook point. And then we carry that back up. And again, we want to keep things skinny but uniform uh, as well so we don't have any lumps or bumps. For the ribbing, I'm going to use some UTC Ultra Wire in small uh, for. 12s and 10s, I'd use the small. For um, 14s and smaller, I would use a uh, extra small. Just going to lay the copper wire along the side of the hook directly behind the bead. Use a couple of wraps to lash it in and just walk the thread back down and lock that in place. And then for the body on this, we're using buzzer wrap. And the color for this one is a dark claret. Okay, this is a great, uh, it's a flashaboo type material. Um, we're just going to use a single strand. And what's good about it is the dye lots ours aren't always totally consistent along the length. So you actually have this sort of variations in color that's quite effective. But it's also translucent, so your thread color or your underbody is going to have an effect on the overall look of the fly. So we're just going to lash that in right at the base. Just get that in place. It's nice and flat, so it doesn't negatively affect our body profile. And then for the under wrap on this, rather than the brown thread, we're going to use some of the holographic red mylar. This is medium just so we get some good coverage. You could also use small as well. You could also use holographic red flashaboo because this is just going to kind of illuminate the underside of the, the underbody of the fly uh, and again we're taking advantage of the translucent effects of the buzzer wrap. So we secure that back down and then quickly take our tying thread up to 
the back of the bead let it hang and then we're just going to come forward with our holographic mylar making nice adjacent turns if you have a little gap it's not the end of the world it is an underbody we're just going for a nice smooth even underbody here so we'll just come up tie off go over top a couple of times and then fold that back and lock it in right under the bead it kind of tucks back in and then we're going to come forward with our buzzer wrap now and, it, and this stuff's like flashaboo so be careful around that hook point it doesn't take it well and we're just moving forward nice even body close touching turns adjacent wraps all the way up you can see how that red holographic mylar just kind of lights up that dark claret buzzer wrap right up tight against and you can see how the how the dye works on that buzzer wrap we have dark spots light spots which is kind of very natural when you see the the coronamid pupa and this is an excellent pattern early in the emergence when you've got black and reds is such a predominant color so you can see how you how this you've got light kind of light and dark spots along the body here I don't know if it kind of shows up it will when we coat it but it really gives a great effect of a recently transformed coronamid pupa that's just come out of the larval stage and is suspending above the bottom uh, gathering those gases it needs to elevate up to the surface. Trout can really key on this coloration. That's why black and red works so well. So now I've taken my copper wire and I'm just going to put one full wrap, use my thumbnail if a bit to push that up, kind of protects the back of the body and I'm going to come forward. My goal is, is to try and get uh, seven ribs for nine body segments. So there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven and up to the back of the bead over a couple of times three two or three times fold that back and then I'm just going to come in place my thumb on that tie off point thumbnail and just helicopter it to break the wire away and then we're just going to spin my bobbin counterclockwise to help flatten the wraps I'm going to make a nice little thread thorax this Rusty brown coloration does a wonderful job imitating the sort of rusty brown coloration that uh, the wing pads of most coronamid pupa. Once I've got it sort of built up where I like it, then I'm going to introduce my whip finisher for the final three or four wraps. Disengage, and then the tying portion of your violet is through. And then we're just going to come in and trim these gills approximately the same length as the bead for your proportions and I've got one little errant fiber that's been driving me nuts since we started tying this so now all it's left to do is give this fly a final coating and we're going to use some of the Solares bone dry uh, resin so we're just this is very thin fills in all the little gaps helps even out the body a little bit and really lights up um, this fly and lets the it sort of really shows the full effect of the uh, um, underbody and then we're just going to come in and once we're happy we just rotate this around make sure there's no lumps or bumps starting to form it's got good flow this bone dry as its name suggests we move the fly all over really dries rock hard there's no tackiness to it and we may actually decide to give that another little coat as well. I just like to sort of fill in a little bit of the, the gaps on the just a light second coat. And we can let, let that get dispersed around and just come in with our dummy needle and I just kind of sweep that resin forward. And again we can come in and flash it. That second coat's kind of a personal thing. I just like it. It helps fill in the gaps between the body and the wire and just smooths out the body. The fish, I don't think, really mind. But uh, again, if you have confidence in what you've tied, you'll probably fish it better. So there you have it, the finished violet.
Next time they're on black and reds, early in the emergence, give this fly a try. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.